I wanted to do an additional video to talk about some some things that show up when people are doing component design. One of the biggest issues that people face is when they're trying to do a component in Altium and it has a pad that's a weird shape or size. The normal reason that there's a pad that's a weird shape or size is when that pad, or it has to do something a little strange, is when that pad is used as a large pad to connect to a large pin, which normally is a thermal pin. So it's usually a pin that's trying to transfer a lot of thermal energy to the PCB, try to get therm thermal energy out of the silicon uh, component that's internal to it. And so whenever you're trying to get heat out, um, PCBs aren't a great thing for dissipating heat because um, they're they're flat, they're not huge thick, thick metal, right? Good things for dissipating heat are things that have a lot of surface area, things so you'll see, you know, fins and things like that, things that have a lot of thermal mass. Uh, circuit boards tend to be neither, and so if we want to dissipate heat using a circuit board, using a footprint for a part, we normally have to connect it to metal that takes up a lot of space on the surface of the PCB. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. One of the weird things about Altium is if you're trying to create a pad that's not one of the default pad sizes, you're limited to basically, or one of the default shapes, you're limited to having an actual pad in the middle of another thing that you're using as your larger pad. So I'll show you how that works. So I've created a new um, PCB library here and I'm just going to, um, so this is a, this is going to be a pad for a special MOSFET that has a, so this is a MOSFET that can do 80 amps of current on a surface mount part. Um, I'm not going to look up the data sheet, I just remember what it is. So I'm going to place pads here just for the actual, for the, for the source, source drain gate here. We're going to start at pad one. Um, I, I had already sized these, so they're 120 by 200 is, is the recommended size for these. The recommended spacing for these is 200 mil um, spacing. So, um, so I've got that here. Um, my, my grid should still be, oops, okay, 100 mil grid. So 200 mil snap, so one, two, three. And then the fourth pad, the thermal pad, uh, is supposed to be spaced from the top of this pin. It's supposed to be spaced, um, the edge of it is supposed to be spaced 200 mil away. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this pad that's right here and I'm just going to make it smaller. So I'm just going to make it just to be clean, 100 mil by 100 mil. And so now the, the, the edge of this is now 50 away, so I'm going to set my grid to 50. Okay, so now the edge is dead on. So we're trying to get this 200 mil away. So 50 away, 100 away, 150 away, 200 mil away. Now this is not the size this pad has to be. This pad actually has to be very large. But we have to have in Altium an actual pad underneath the pad we use that's a weird shape. So I'm going to take this pad like this, and I'm now going to draw a pad around it. So to do that, I'm going to place the solid region type and there's not a lot of instructions for this in the part. They, you know, it's got to be big, but this is just connecting to a giant fin of metal. So it's really kind of a, the bigger you can make this pad, the better. And um, so, but it has to avoid, it has to keep a clearance of at least 50 mil from these pads over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start drawing a typical heat sink shape that you'll see on parts like this. So we go over to the edge of this pad or so. Let's go over. We have to get... See, that's close to 50 away there. That'll be good enough. Let's see, one, two, let's see. Actually, let me set my grid coarser. Okay, so 50, 150, 250, that's fine. So what it did is it just created this heat sink pad. So this pad is, um, <clears throat> or so this is the size of the copper, this is the top copper for this pad. One thing that we want to check though is let's look at the 3D. So if we look at the 3D view, 
this looks okay, but we're in the component view here. So one of the problems is, in the component view, it doesn't always show solder mask. Because solder mask is not, solder mask defines where you should have openings in your solder mask layer that's covering your device. With heat sinks, it's a little weird. Sometimes the heat sink, the heat sink pad can be covered with solder mask. It's usually better to keep it exposed. It definitely needs to be, the solder mask needs to be open at the place where you're trying to make solder contact with that fin. So we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna make the whole thing open. So we have to open up a solder mask layer in it. Now we can see what that looks like right now if we look at um, top solder, right? So the problem right now is if we look at the top solder, the only exposed area is this little square where our pin was, where our actual pin was. This new, this new region that we just created, this actually doesn't have exposure in the solder mask layer. So what we can do is, well, there's a couple things we can do. One, we could just draw it. So while we're in the solder mask layer, we could just redraw this thing. The other thing we can do is we can select this component that we just created, and we can do this paste and solder mask expansion rule. So if we look at the paste and solder mask expansion rule, currently it's set to manual. So that means we'd have to manually draw the paste layers and solder mask layers if we wanted to show where we want paste for a stencil to go, and if we wanted to show where we want um, uh, solder, the openings in the solder mask to be. What if instead for the solder mask expansion we set it to rule? And so the rule basically says how much, how, how much space do you want around the edge of the copper to where you have extra openings in the solder mask. You don't normally want solder mask on top of copper that you're trying to use the pad because what's going to happen is when the solder wicks onto that pad it's going to wick under the solder mask and it's going to kind of start to peel it off. So you generally have a little perimeter around your copper pad where there's no solder mask. So there's going to be a little sliver of fiberglass exposed around the edge of the pad is normally the way to do it. That's defined by this expansion. So in this case it's saying 4 mil expansion. That right, seems reasonable. <laughs> we'll keep it there. We'll select OK. And look what happens then. After we do that, now that whole area becomes an opening in the um, solder mask layer. And so now if we make this circuit board, if we make this component, all of this will have exposed copper. So this will all have exposed metal. Okay, um, so we can also, if we look at the paste too, so the paste, it, this is, if we export the paste layer to have a stencil made for our board or something like that, this is where are the openings in that stencil. So this is going to show where is solder paste going to be deposited. This might not be enough, right? If, you know, if our metal contact was pretty big here, this pad right here alone might not be sufficient. It might be. I don't know how much solder it needs. But the size of the pad you need for a paste expansion depends on how much paste you need and where that paste needs to be. Sometimes with a thermal pad, you don't, you know, sometimes you don't need to cover the whole thing with paste. Sometimes you want to, though, because adding paste on this whole thing is actually going to give you, um, adding paste on this entire thing is going to give you more mass. It's going to give you more thermal mass. So especially if you have a component that isn't constantly trying to dump heat, you know, maybe it's just, you know, once every minute for, a, a, you know, a fraction of a second, it dumps a huge amount of heat. Uh, in that case, you might actually want the bulk of the extra solder mask on here to help you out. But we can define this. So let's just define this manually. So just while we're in the top paste layer here, um, we'll just do place a fill or a solid region. We have a couple options, right? So let's just do here. Oops. I don't think I wanted to do that. Oops, sorry. Let's go back and let's place. I think we wanted to solve that solid region again. There we go. Okay, so we wanted solid region again. Okay, so now we place an opening here. So this is actually where our. Um, opening in our solder mask is going to be for depositing solder. Now sometimes with solder mask, when you have a big pad and you need to get a lot of solder, you actually don't want to have one giant opening in your, in your uh, sten solder stencil. Because what's going to happen is when this stencil is open like this and a blade comes through and squeegees solder across it, if it's too big, the blade is actually going to flex into this. So the blade's actually going to flex in and it's going to have a thinner layer of solder in there than, than, if, than if we had a smaller opening. So sometimes what people like to do is instead of doing this, when they'll, when they'll lose solder mask for a large opening where they need a lot of solder, they'll instead do this. 
they will oops let's set my grid a little smaller Now this is not balanced, I'm just kind of freehanding this. And that's messed up. Okay, so sometimes people will do this, where, where they'll make openings in this in this layer. So when they have these openings like this, it's gonna deposit four little squares of solder which is going to avoid that issue of when you have a big solder opening of it sort of scraping the solder out of the middle. Sometimes you'll actually get more solder deposited doing it like this than if you left it as just one big giant open region. So you'll commonly see something like this. This is also used sometimes to minimize the amount of solder you have. Quite often when you have a, uh, a pad, like a thermal pad on the bottom of a chip, if you get too much solder on that thermal pad, it's going to be too thick. So if you get too much solder on there, when your chip is on it and it melts, the chip is actually going to be floating on top of that bubble of solder. So doing something like this can be a way to minimize the amount of solder. So you don't quite have it. So you still distribute the solder on the pad, but you don't quite have as much. Now we have this issue, though, where this original pad that we're using to make connection has this, this wonky little uh, extra solder here. There's a couple things we can do about that. If we look at the actual pad itself, one thing we can just do is we can just, for the uh, for the paste expansion, we can just do set it to manual um, and then just get rid of it. All right. So now they're actually, this is a pad, this pad four, which we're using just to make electrical contact to our actual pad. This pad has no actual, you know, if we did a stencil, it wouldn't actually put paste where the actual pad is. It's just going to leave it like this. So um, there's another, one more thing that I want to talk about, and that is a lot of times when you're doing thermal, when you need extra heat dissipation, you're going to go down to a ground plane or you're going to go down to a pad on the back. So let's see how we could do that. Let's switch back to just the top layer view. And I'm just going to duplicate this region. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it, and then I'm going to click on the corner here, and then I'm going to paste it. Actually, I'm going to paste it here-ish. And then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to change it from top layer to bottom layer. And, um, and I'm actually going to set both of these to manual. And now I'm going to move it back down into position. Okay, so now what we just did is we just created a metal region on the back that mirrors the metal region on the front. And so if we like flip our board, if we do view flipboard and we look at the bottom layer now we're seeing that pad on the bottom layer so um, bottom layer pads this again this just gives extra surface area for heat dissipation quite often these are not exposed so quite often these will not be exposed the benefit of leaving them exposed though is if we leave this exposed then we're able to do things like connect a mechanical heat sink onto this or something like that um, but if you leave it open on the back sometimes you run into an issue where you know, if the board is set on something, a lot of times people like to keep the back layer of their board much more insulated than the top layer. So you'll be, have a big open exposed pad where if you get a little little wired squirrel, a little shaving of something metallic, it could, it could electrically arc between um, that pad on the back and whatever housing or casing it's in. So sometimes people keep it sealed up. Sometimes people keep it sealed up. It still lets some heat dissipate, um, but... It, it keeps it also electrically protected. So a little bit of thermal dissipation, zero electrical uh, connection. But when we do something like this, we still have to make a connection between these two layers. So uh, one thing we can do is we can just place a connection here. So let's check the size. So one, always be sure to check the size. By, the standard rule we have is 27 mil diameter, 13 mil hole. Um, it's not, in this case, it shouldn't, too much matter about tenting? Well, we'll see. We'll check the tenting. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to set... 
Coffee engine, manual. We're going to keep it tinted. So it's basically just not going to do a mask. Uh, it's not going to, yeah. Um, so it's not, we're not going to actually have an opening in the solder mask around this hole, but if the layer that it was on already had an opening, it's going to have an opening there. So, so this allows us, if we do this, if we say these are tented, we say a through hole is tented, then all it means is that if, if the region that it's in had an opening in the solder mask, it'll be an opening in the solder mask. If the region it's in did not have an opening in the solder mask, it'll be closed. Okay, so let's go back. So what we're going to do is we'll set our grid to something like 50 mil. And um, we're just going to place a bunch of these. And I can go crazy, and if I get bored, I could do an array of these as well. Um, so why am I doing so many of these? So all we're doing is we are making a thermal connection between layers here. And so we could keep doing this, you know, for the whole thing. Fabs are normally okay with this. Fabs don't like a bunch of unnecessary, unnecessary drill holes. They do acknowledge that you need to make thermal connections. So when you're doing a connection like this, top and bottom, you know, this is a good way to do it. Um, another thing we could do once we get... I'll show you another thing you could do. Oops. If we look at this now, so one thing to keep in mind is uh, that these holes, they will suck up solder. So whenever you have a through hole like this, so sometimes if you have through holes that are going to be exposed to solder, solder is going to fill these when you do the reflow, you might need extra solder. So you might need an extra large opening in your solder mask on the other side so that when that solder fills the holes, it doesn't completely run out. So just to sanity check myself, we're going to look at the bottom paste layer. So yeah, bottom paste layer still shows nothing. So there's going to be nothing exposed on the bottom layer here. Um, top, okay, oh, so the no, no paste on there. Okay, let's do bottom solder. And again, no opening of the solder mask. Top solder, there is none. So this bottom of this chip is going to be completely covered in solder mask, even though there's these through holes here, completely covered in solder mask. So let's view, uh, let's flip the board again, yeah. Okay, so that's how you do wonky pads. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Also, check check your uh, stuff. So I want to show a common, when people are making parts, one of the biggest mistakes people make is when they're looking at the data sheet. There's two mistakes people make. One, when they're looking at the data sheet for the part, they look at the pads of the part from the bottom view. So if you're looking at the bottom view, that means if your chip is flipped, that's the order of the pads you're seeing. Try to look for top views of their pad. The top view of your chip showing the pad locations is going to more appropriately show you if you're doing a top, if you're viewing the top of your board, the order that your pad should be. So you don't get it mirror image. Everybody every year does a mirror image of some part. It just seems to happen, but try to avoid that if you can. Be really careful when you're looking at a diagram in the data sheet of how that diagram is labeled. Is it top view or is it bottom view? It really matters a lot. The other thing people do is quite often they'll be looking at the pad dimensions. So if they're looking at the pad dimensions instead of the recommended um, landing pads, so if they're looking at the, the, the dimensions of the pads on the chip and not the dimensions of the recommended footprint pads, then they end up doing something that looks a little wonky. So for instance, let me um, switch to my, to my microscope view here. And in microscope view, so this was a part that a student made where they use the dimensions of the pad that's on the chip. So this is a leadless chip, or maybe it has tiny little leads. But they made, when they made their component, 
they used the size of the on-chip pad contact area. They did not use the recommended size for the pad. So if you build a part and it looks like this with these little teeny tiny baby pads, something's wrong. Uh, normally, if anything, you want to make your pads extra big and extra long when you're doing a, like a prototype or, or a manual assembly because you want to actually be able to make contact with these things as you're doing it. So, All right, everybody. Thank you. I kind of am re recording this video sort of, well, we have class in 45 minutes, so, so I'll see you all in 45 minutes. Uh, but I wanted to just add this extra detail. It's one more thing I want you to know before you get started um, doing your board designs so, or doing your prototype board design. So thank you all and I will, I will see you all shortly.